Welcome to the MSU Deer Labs online seminar series brought to you by Mississippi State University Extension Service and the Forest and Wildlife Research Center. My name is Steve Damaris and I'm the Taylor Chair in Applied Big Game Research and Instruction at Mississippi State University. Thank you for joining me. So let's talk about the critical phases of life history throughout the year for bucks and does. We need to understand life history events. We've already talked a lot about antlers and, 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 and growing fawns and things like that relative to the, the nutritional needs. But let's look at the life cycle, the life history, and how it affects the needs of the animal undergoing that life stage. A critical life history stage for bucks is antler growth. Antler growth takes place from roughly April through August. But the most intense amount of antler growth takes place during May and especially June and July. The antlers at this stage are growing at about a, a centimeter per day in a, in a mature buck, and that's roughly an inch every other day in, in terms of the beam length. So that's a tremendous growth rate in uh, antler and 50% of that is protein, 50% of it is minerals, if you think back from the earlier slide. So during May, June, July, there's a lot of need for protein and minerals in this point from the standpoint of a bucks growing his antlers. And again, we saw this earlier, uh, nutrition and antler development, protein diet uh, is significant. And the bigger the antlers you want the bucks to grow, the more protein they need in their diet. Now, another critical life history phase for the buck is uh, the rut. Now, bucks during the rut, they are obsessed with looking for does to breed, fighting other bucks for dominance. They have a high testosterone level and they are very active and aggressive. And during this time of rut, and I would actually call it potential rut, basically from the stage of antler velvet shedding, typically in, in early October, from that point until when the antlers drop in typically February, uh, that whole period is the potential rut. The male is a potential sire if he finds a doe that is in breeding condition. So that potential rut period is re really demanding. They increase their exercise, they fight a lot, they run around a lot, and they also decrease their foraging activity. They spend less time eating. So if you increase your exercise and decrease your diet intake, what's gonna happen? You're gonna lose weight. The lower two pictures in this screen show a buck that was photographed in October. Look at the belly fat on him. And you look at the hind quarter and he is uh, well muscled and well fattened up. Look at that same buck, it's the exact same buck come February. You don't see the belly fat. You see his femur bones sticking out and his pelvic girdle sticking out of his hind quarter. He has lost all of his fat and he's even digested some of his muscle trying to survive the rut. So the rut is not the period that I'm worried about as a habitat manager because they're not gonna be eating a lot during the rut, during the potential rut. It's actually the post-rut recovery period after the breeding takes place that is most important to the deer and his survival and his ability to grow a new set of antlers the next year. So post-rut recovery in most of Mississippi and most of the Southeast and probably most of the Eastern United States is January, February, and March. This is the time period when they're needing to recover from what they did to themselves during the breeding season. And this graph is, is a pretty complicated graph. I apologize for that, but it shows dressed body weight 
in kilograms of bucks at different ages here in uh, Mississippi and in particular from the Thin Lurse soil region. This Thin Lurse region is one of our kind of average habitat quality regions. And you see their dressed body weight by time of the year, October, November, December, and January, and you see it arches. And what's happening here is a year and a half old buck, his body mass is increasing from October into November through November because he's still growing. Remember earlier I said uh, that the time of growth grow, goes into the fall for younger animals. And this is a younger yearling buck. He's trying to grow and he's going to keep adding body mass until what we call the tipping point, this uh, triangle here. And after that, he's go his body weight is actually going to dec start declining because he is beginning to participate in his own way in the breeding behavior taking place. And in this particular study region, the first breeding takes place in uh, this time period in November and the meeting, median breeding or what you might call the peak of breeding takes place here in, in late uh, December. And so uh, he's just growing. And once he starts seeing and sensing does being bred around him, he's going to become less interested in eating, more interested in looking around for does to breed. And so he's going to start losing weight after about midway uh, through between the first breeding event and the peak of breeding. Looking at two-year-olds in the green here, you see they're also increasing their body weights from October into November, but right after the first breeding event, they start losing weight because they are getting more and more involved in chasing does. Three-year-old bucks still growing in their body weights. They're, they're adding some fat, probably not necessarily protein at this point. They're adding some fat going into the fall, but about the day of uh, the first breeding event, they start losing weight dramatically. They're going through this rutting behavior. They're decreasing their consumption rate of food and looking for does. Four-year-old bucks, they're adding some fat even in October, but they start losing weight at by the end of October and lose weight dramatically through through the winter. And then their mature bucks in this region their tipping point is already started at the beginning of hunting season. They are at their peak body mass. And this is October 1 here in Mississippi. That's bow season. And that's when the bucks are as big as they're going to get. And they're only going to lose weight through the rest of the hunting season because it's all about fighting other bucks and chasing does. So the tipping point reflects the greater investment in rutting activity and that varies with the age or the life stage of the buck and the older they are the earlier in the fall they they start investing greater activity and less feeding in potential rutting activity when the actual rut takes place in a region is depending upon when the does happen to be receptive but these bucks are ready whenever they find a doe to be bred. So male deer have these two periods of needs from their life stages. One is that post-rut recovery, and then that late stage of antler development during the summertime when they're really putting a lot of nutrients into their antler growth, protein and energy and, and minerals. Well, females have some similar patterns timed to late pregnancy or what we would call the in humans the third trimester and this typically is associated with a very high protein requirement and energy requirement now this is extra this is over and above what she needs to live her normal life a life of maintenance taking care of herself if you look at the left hand picture you'll see a very pregnant doe from our research facility here at Mississippi State University. The graph on the right shows daily protein requirements 
Now, don't worry about the actual units. Just look at it as relative increase in protein associated with the days of pregnancy. You see, early in pregnancy, there's not a lot of protein requirement because the, the growing fetuses are very small. In the last third of the pregnancy, there's a very significant increase in the protein requirement as well as the energy and the mineral requirements. This figure only shows the protein requirements, but that last third of pregnancy, there's a dramatic increase in the nutritional needs tied to this particular stage of life for the adult female. The exact timing of this increased protein and energy and mineral requirement depends on when the does were bred. In much of the Southeast, this last third of pregnancy takes place June and July, certainly in Mississippi, in much of the Deep South, perhaps May and June in, uh, as you go further north, and even April and May when you get into the northern United States and southern Canada. But in the Southeast, and especially in the Deep South, June and July is the time period when adult females have a tremendously increasing protein requirement, mineral requirement, energy requirement, over and above their normal maintenance requirements. Once the fawns are born, they immediately start nursing the doe. And this graph shows protein requirements in grams per day. Again, uh, the units are not critical. What's important is the relative amounts of protein needed over and above the requirements for that female to exist. So if she has two fawns, she's going to immediately start needing an extra 25 grams of protein each day during her first two to three months of lactation. Lactation typically lasts for three to four months of age, and it shows here from days zero through 100 on this graph. And again, in, in the Deep South, August and September is this period of heaviest lactation demand or nursing demand tied to that stage of uh, life history for the adult female when she's needing to provide extra nutrients to raise her fawns. If you're further north, it's going to be a little earlier in the summer. But the point is, in much of the South, August and September, late summer, very, very late summer, early fall, is this extremely high protein, energy, and mineral requirement associated with lactation. This is a critical time of life history for the adult females. This photo really brings it home in my mind. This is an estimate of the added protein cost of lactation for a doe to raise two fawns to weaning age. She will need an extra 71.5 pounds of crude protein. Now, this is not pounds of forage. This is pounds of actual crude protein. So where is she going to get this crude protein from? She's going to have to eat it, and she's going to be eating forages if you remember earlier in this presentation, I talked about the dramatic decrease in protein content of forages from the spring into the summer. If that doe is having to eat forages that are averaging 10% crude protein, she will need to eat almost 1,800 pounds of wet, or think of it as fresh forage. She's, that's what she's going to have to eat off of the, the landscape, off of your property to meet her nutritional needs, raising two fawns. That's over and above her normal requirement. If she has the benefit of eating forages that on average are 20% crude protein, the amount of forage drops it by 50%, cuts in half because the forages have twice as much crude protein. And so then she's only needing about 900 pounds of extra fresh forage. Only 900 pounds of extra forage to raise her two fawns. Does your property, does the habitat you are producing have this much high quality forage in late summer to support 
the needs of every doe that is raising two fawns through weaning age? It's an important question.